Hello, y'all. This is part two. I may mistake and match the exit button, but part two of be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But I was saying, um, God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. And when we're not living for the Lord and we in the world living, you would be blind. The devil can have you deceived and thinking that you're nobody, thinking that nobody loves you, thinking that uh, Jesus don't love you. Just put so many thoughts in your mind that is, is so not true because God loves you very much and he has a plan for your life. And what else I put on my notes? Oh, when we read God's word, God's word begins to shift our mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. The word will begin to shift how you see yourself, how God sees you, and his plan for your life. Renewing your mind, changing the way you think to create a better life for yourself and a life that honors God. We are made in his image. Amen. Yes, we are made in the image of God. So our life shall reflect God. Our life shall reflect the word of God. Amen. Because... God word is what, what converts our heart. God word is what converts our mind. Amen. Come on, somebody. So when you read the word of God, it will shift your thought. It will, it will, God word will remind you, I am called to do great things. God word will remind you that he has given you authority and power to trample over serpents and the devil, the demons from hell. Come on, somebody. God is able. To do all things. Amen. Hallelujah. It is very important that we renew our mind by reading the word of God so we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind. But if you're not reading the word, how are you going to be transformed? You can't be transformed on the phone. You can't be trained. Your mind can't be transformed in the club. Your mind can't be transformed at the bar. Your mind can't be transformed drinking alcohol and having sex and all that, all those things that is not of God. We got to read the word. How you think that you're going to break free from doing things that, that is not pleasing in the sight of God? You have to get in the word. You got to surrender your life first to Christ. You got to get in the word too. And you got to, to, to make it a everyday a daily uh uh be dedicated you have to be dedicated daily reading the bible amen come on somebody the lord also said we are we are made in his image so our life shall reflect that the world and society have patterns or ways that lead to a broken life amen the world has a i'm gonna read that again hold on the world and society have patterns or ways that lead to a broken life. That is so true. Guess what? If you continue to hang around the same nobodies, guess what you're going to be? A nobody. Keep on hanging around those same people that's on drugs and ain't trying to change and not trying to do anything with themselves. Guess what you'll end up doing? Birds of the feather flock together. Come on, somebody. We got to do better. It is time to let go of the worldly things. It is time to surrender and give your life and your heart to God. It's time to get in this word and read the word. Read the Bible. It's not a bad book at all. It's very interesting. You will get to know God's character. He is He is amazing. He's funny, too. He He, he, he has character. He does. He, he has character. Once you begin to get in the Word of God and read it on the daily, guess what? Even if you just start off with 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon, 15 minutes in the evening, guess what? It's going to become a habit. You're going to want your body, your mind going to be set to, I got to read the Bible. I got to spend some time with God. I got to spend some time with God. I need to read. I need to study. And guess what? The more you read the word, guess what? It will transform your mind. It will transform the way you tra transform the way you think, the way you walk. You will begin to be convicted. You know how um, maybe you be at a traffic light and people cut you off and usually you may, you know, yell some mean things out the window or whatnot. It will begin to, to, God will begin to change you on the inside to where you can look at a person and you can say, God bless you. You. And mean it genuinely, not God bless you as sar as in sarcasm, but a tr truly genuine God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Come on, somebody. That's what kind of God we serve. He, his spirit resides on the inside of us still. So when you surrender give your life to God, God's spirit resides on the inside of you. And people will begin to see the light that's in you. And, and, and once people begin to see the light that's in you, it makes people want to have a relationship with God. Those who have never had a relationship with God. Or maybe someone who had a relationship with God who may have been hurt or may feel like they they, they gave their life to the Lord, but they backslid. And they don't, they don't, they're not sure if they can come back or if the God will, will accept them, which he will. 
God will use you in that area of being a light to someone else who is living a life of darkness. Amen. Come on, somebody. Who won't want to live for God? God is truly amazing. Hallelujah. It is time to renew our mind on a daily with God. The Lord said the world and society have patterns of ways that lead to a broken life. These patterns are easy to fall into and can be difficult to transform. The patterns or routines are often performed mindlessly without any consideration of our actions or their consequence, consequences. However, we are no, what I put, no struck with them, not stuck with them. Let me read that again. These patterns are easy to fall into and can be difficult to transform. The patterns or routines are often performed mindlessly. Yeah, because you ain't thinking. You don't be thinking right when you ain't in the word of God. If you you out there drinking and driving, that ain't you ain't using your right mind. You is not using your right mind. You just doing whatever it is that you want to do and doing it carelessly because that is a very dangerous thing. A lot of people drink and get behind the wheel. That is so dangerous, not just for yourself, but for other people too. To drink and drive, that is not a good thing. That is very dangerous. To drink and drive, not just drink and drive, drive and be on any kind of drug, any kind of paraphernalia. That is crazy as heck. That just that is. It is, it is, it is. But you know, um, you can't change on your own rebirth table. You have to give your life to the Lord. I tried it my I tried it several times to do it on my own. And guess what? Every time I ended back up back to square one. And I'm so happy that I woke up and smelled a coffee because God is good. Like I look back at my life and things that I did in my teenage years, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know where in the world I would do that today, you know? It's by the grace of God. I had to renew my mind. I had to surrender. I had to, you know, leave it at the altar and, 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 and allow God to change me. No one can change overnight. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. We got to be real. Can't nobody change overnight. It's a, it's a stepping stone and it's a progress. I tell people, once you give your life to the Lord, take it day by day. Don't worry about tomorrow. Get through today. And then when tomorrow comes, that's when you when you when you deal with tomorrow. But we're talking about today. So take it one day at a time. Don't allow anybody to, to um rush you with your salvation as far as like you need to stop doing this, you need to stop doing that. It's a process. Everybody process is different. Just because you decide you may decide decide today to give your life to the Lord and you might smoke cigarettes, for example. Um God don't expect you to get rid of them cigarettes by today. He don't expect you to get rid of them cigarettes by Friday. It's a process. Everybody process is different. So, you know, allow God to process you. I had to learn that. I had to learn that early on when I surrendered and gave my life to the Lord. To not allow anyone else to process me. Allow God to process me. He may tell, he may tell uh, me, I don't smoke, but he may tell, tell me, stop smoking cigarettes. Um... And then and, and I, I can stop today, right? But he might tell you and your 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 progress may be three more months before you stop. That don't mean God don't love you. That don't mean that you're not saved. You know, you still can be saved and smoke a cigarette after you done surrendered your life. Not not saying like you've been saved a whole year and you're still smoking cigarettes, you know, or whatever, years, whatever. You know, everybody process is different. So I wanted to say, um, Allow God to process process you and don't let, allow anyone to rush your process. Go to God, um, pray, ask Holy Spirit to teach you how to start fast. And that's how I was able to break from smoking cigarettes. That's how I was able to break from drinking alcohol. I had to fast. I didn't know how to fast. Holy Spirit taught me how to fast. Taught me how to go from three days to five days to seven days to 10 days to 21 days. Holy Spirit led me into a fast. When we fast and we put our plate down, Holy Spirit would give us a uh, give us strength in areas that we didn't even know that was there because we're leaning on we're leaning on God and not on our own own um we're not leaving on we're not we're leaning more on God and not on the flesh. Amen because we want to die to the flesh so the spirit man can live. Amen. Come on somebody. So um renew your mind with the word of God. Be you transformed. Then I have some more notes. Let me see. Um Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Our, our patterns can be identified and changed by choosing to focus on Christ 
Amen. Focusing on God's mercy and the love of God. Focusing on being in Christ and reject the lie and deception of sinful desires. Oh my gosh. Of the enemy of your soul. Yes, the devil is the enemy. The flesh is your enemy. The flesh wants you to do the opposite of what God wants you to do. Amen. You can't, you can't, you can't stop doing things on your own. We need Holy Spirit to strengthen us. God's word is our strength. Amen. Come on. When we read the word of God, it strengthens us. When we fast, it strengthens us. It renew you and it's on the inside. I tell people it's real good to fast. Fasting, oh my God, you haven't heard from God? Fast. You want to answer a question? Fast. You want to break through? Fast. God will speak to you and he got a big mouth. I tell people all the time, I didn't know how big God's mouth was until I started living a life of fast. And then I heard God speak, speak, speak. God was waking me up in the middle of the night to write things. I journal all the time. This is one of my little notebooks. This is how I did today's Bible study thing. Um, I have so many of these. I love writing. I, I journal a lot or whatnot, but I, um, it's good to journal because God is always speaking. I even got a, a folder in my phone. It's called Wisdom from God. And God, be, he be talking to me so much, so I have to text what he say because he, he got a big mouth. He talk a lot in a good way, not in a bad way. I'm glad I can hear from God because some people don't hear from God. You can hear from God. Be happy he, you can hear from God. Amen. And never be ashamed that you can hear from God. Never be ashamed of, of, of the wisdom that God gives you. Amen. Come on, somebody. So. I just jumped on here to encourage you guys to stay focused on the Lord and 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 my my said my my story may not look like your story your story may not look like my story but guess what hey we all got a testimony and don't ever in life be ashamed of your testimony don't ever be ashamed of where you came from because God loves you and He can turn a mess into a miracle a test into a testimony Amen come on somebody so I just encourage you to. Um, continue to trust God and to continue to keep the faith, continue to know that you are not alone, no matter where you are in your season of life. You know, um, there are different types of season in life. Some people may be going through something right now. Some might be just came through a breakthrough and someone, some people can be entering to, um, a, a season of, uh, going through, you know, but we have to know no matter what the season is that we are going through, God is with us. We are not alone. God is right here. He, he resides on the inside of your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Guess what? He got angels all around you protecting you. Amen. Come on. He is with you. He is with you. He is with you. He is with you. Continue to read. Continue to fast. Continue to pray. Continue to love one another. Continue to forgive. Make sure you share the gospel of the good news. Tell people about who God is. We can't be quiet when it comes to talking about the Lord. We can't be quiet when it comes to our family members who is unsaved and they're not living right for the Lord. And we know that they're not living right. We know that they haven't surrendered their hearts to God. Don't be ashamed to pull on them. Don't be ashamed to tell them how much God loves them. Don't be ashamed to tell, excuse me, don't be ashamed to tell them that God has a plan for their life. Introduce them to God. They may not know who God is. They know of God. I say, if, if you know who God is, you will live for them. Live for him. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to the most high God. When you know who God is, you will live for him. Not just post on Facebook. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this. Thank you, God, for that. But you, your life will be a representation of who he is because we are made in his image. Anybody can talk about him. But how are you living when the lights go off? How are you living when you leave the church building? How are you really leaving, living? We are the church. So we carry God with us everywhere we go. But if you're not feeding your 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 spirit man with the word of God, how are you going to be the church? You can't be a building that's empty because guess what? How you, what you, how you going to feed his sheep? Huh? How are we going to feed God's sheep? You know, we, are, we, we, we got to feed with the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So if there's anyone that's on here that haven't given their life to the Lord, we can surrender today. You can say, Dear Heavenly Father, I repent for my sins, Lord. I ask that you forgive me for my sins, known and known, seen and unseen, omission and commission, Lord God. Lord God, I ask that you come into my heart. Lord God, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe that Jesus Christ is your son and that he died for my sin. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have said those words, guess what? Believe it. Believe that you are saved. Believe that God is your father. Believe that you, you can... um. 
believe that you are saved and believe that God has a plan for your life. Next step is to get you a Bible. If you don't have one, I tell people they like 10 bucks or something at Family Dollar. Get you a Bible. NIV might be a good version because it kind of broke it down versus uh, the King James with the this, that, those. Some people be like, what are they talking about? Google can be your best friend as well because I, I use all resources. I go to Google. I got a King James Bible. I got an NIV Bible and I got an ESV Bible. I go to different ones because some stuff I don't understand either. I'm still learning. Every day we learn and we're going to be learning all the way to the Lord call us home. Amen. Hallelujah. Which is a good thing, right? To be learning, um, um, learning from the Lord. Amen. And so, um, so the next step is to set your phone for three times a day. Whatever time you wake up in the morning, mine is set for 5 a.m., 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. to pray. We got to pray because guess what? Every day is warfare. Every day is going to be warfare. Like today might have been a good day, but tomorrow, guess what? The enemy may come for you. God forbid, and I pray that he does it in Jesus' name, but I'm just saying we got to stay girded up. The Bible says stay girded up. Gird up your loins. That's what it says. Gird up your loins. That means feed yourself the word of God. Study scripture. So when the enemy come for you, you can remind the devil that I am saved, sanctified, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I ain't going nowhere. My God, my Bible says, the Lord said, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against me. It will not prosper in Jesus Christ's mighty name. You will utter those words, but you will utter those words out of your heart with so much faith. You will utter those words out your heart with so much boldness because you will begin to know who you are and who God created you to be. You will begin to know that God created you to do great and mighty things for his kingdom and can't no devil in hell stop the plans that God has for your life. Amen. Come on, somebody. God is able to do all things. And I am Prophetess Diamond Watkins from Rebirth Table Outreach Ministry. I play that Jesus bless you tremendously. I pray that you have a great week in Jesus name. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. And don't forget to tell somebody that God has a plan for their life. Don't forget to tell somebody, renew your mind with the word of God. Romans 12. Amen. Do have a blessed day.